mom, you outdid yourself. Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon are two games that will definitely take you on an exciting adventure to catch, battle and trade all new Pokemon. Mom, you should make a Pokemon dessert! There's no pressure to get it right like that of a five-year-old. Welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. I'm Elise Strawn and today I'm excited to have partnered with Nintendo to bring you guys a dessert inspired by the new Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon games, launching November 18th. You can play Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon on the Nintendo 3DS handheld gaming system. The recipe I want to share with you guys today starts with an amazing dessert inspired by flavours of the Alola region topped with a hidden Pokemon, you never know which one, inside a chocolate Pokeball. The tropical islands of the Alola region are filled with new Pokemon to discover and catch, including new legendary Pokemon. When we pour white chocolate sauce over the top of our chocolate Pokeball, it's going to dissolve to reveal whichever Pokemon you've been lucky enough to find, capture and eventually eat inside. The things you're going to need to make your amazing Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon inspired desserts. You're going to need clear plastic Christmas ornaments, the ones that fall apart in the middle. White candy melts, red candy melts, a cookie cutter, black fondant, white fondant, some toasted coconut, white sandwich cookies, white chocolate and some whipping cream. I'm also going to show you guys how to make an amazingly delicious no churn pineapple ice cream. For this, you're going to need a tin of crushed pineapple, about a half a cup of sugar, some condensed milk, some whipping cream, and a little vanilla. I'll leave that recipe as well as everything you're going to need to recreate this on the MyCupcakeAddiction.com website. I've also got some edible images. If you don't have an edible image printer at home, you can often find people that will print these online or good cake decorating shops will print them for you. But I wanted to make sure that all of my Pokemon characters were just perfect inside my chocolate Pokeballs. Let's get started. First up, the ice cream. I'm going to take my crushed pineapple and also my sugar and pop them into either a saucepan or a fry pan. And then you want to heat that on a medium heat. Let it simmer for about 10 minutes until a lot of that moisture is evaporated and it becomes quite thick and kind of caramelized, like a jam or a jelly, but a chunky one. While that one's simmering away, we can get started on the no churn ice cream. This is unbelievably easy. You want to put your cream Mm. all of your condensed milk. This is what adds the sweetness. And then your vanilla. Mix that on medium speed to start off with and then up to a high speed until it's just starting to hold its own weight. We want this semi-whipped, not fully whipped. If I was to put it on a spoon, it should fall off in nice big chunks, not stay on the spoon. Remove your reduced pineapple mixture from the hot plate and let it cool. Put it in the fridge or the freezer if you have to, but you don't want to add these two together while that pineapple's still hot. This is a beater you're definitely going to want to lick. It's kind of amazing. Mm. I'm just going to set mine in a little disposable tray. And you may have leftovers here. I know, it's tough. I'm going to pour in about a third of my mixture or till my container's about a third of the way full. And then in goes about a third of my pineapple mix. You could put more or less of the pineapple as you please here. The pineapple's quite heavy and once it freezes, we want it to be frozen in sort of separate particles. So I'm going to use my chopstick or a skewer and I'm just going to swirl the skewer back and forward till all of my pineapple has been dispersed. On to our next layer of ice cream. More pineapple, swirl, more ice cream, more pineapple and swirl. We made ice cream and we were smart enough to have leftovers. This guy needs to go into the freezer for 6 to 12 hours so it's definitely a make in advance if you want to save time on the day of your dessert making. While your ice cream's chilling out, we can make our Pokeballs. So these are my little ornaments. They're super inexpensive. You should be able to pick them up for less than a dollar each. I'm gonna take a spoon and a little of my red candy melt, place it into one half and white candy melt in the other. 
When you're doing your red candy melt, make sure that it is particularly thin on this section because that's the bit that we want to melt first to save your Pokeball going on top of your Pokemon's head. So make it as thin as you can in that top section, but the sides can be a little thicker. Something like that, really nice and really thin, particularly for your red half. The white half you can go a little thicker on because that's got to support a bit of weight, but it also doesn't have to have that same melting effect. The two halves of our Pokeball are ready to go into the fridge. Five minutes in the fridge and then two minutes in the freezer. The freezer is going to cause them to contract away from the outside edges of the plastic ornament and slide out really easily, but you don't want to go much more than that because they'll get brittle and they'll crack. Coming back from our two minutes in the freezer and you should be able to see that they're already pulling away. If you're concerned, just have a look. You should be able to see the plastic coming away from the outside. Put the same amount of pressure on the inside with all of your fingers and just slide them out. These are super thin, they're quite fragile, but the effect is so worth it. Two halves of a Pokeball dessert. I'm making five of these today. To join my balls together, I'm gonna to use a fry pan or a skillet. You can heat yours on the heat if you like. I've just got my a little boiling water because it really doesn't need to be that hot. I'm gonna wipe off any excess moisture and then I'm just gonna do first to my white ball. Gently does it, gently does it. It doesn't need long in there. It's very thin, it only needs to melt a fraction. And then my red, pop it out and join the two together. If you have to handle your ball, try to keep it in a paper towel or a tissue. That's just going to stop your fingers melting through, but it's also going to protect it from getting unwanted fingerprints. Pop that one off into the fridge and let it completely set. To make my two spheres look like an actual Pokeball, I'm going to roll a really thin strip of black fondant and I cut mine to about half an inch, maybe just slightly larger. A little bit of water on the back of my strip and I'm going to wrap it around the center of my Pokeball and out of those offcuts, I'm going to cut a small circle, which is going to make like the Pokeball button. A little bit of water on the back of my button. And use that to cover up the seam. It's taking shape. Finally, for the Pokeball, I'm going to roll out a very thin piece of white fondant and just cut two smaller white circles and layer them on top of that black circle to complete our Pokeball. Ta-da! Our Pokeball is complete. This is going to feel very wrong but you actually need to now uncomplete your Pokeball. So turn it upside down so that it's pretty even and the red part is in your paper towel or tissue. Take a circle cutter, heat it in a little bit of that boiling water and we're going to cut a hole in the white bottom of our Pokeball. We can't apply too much pressure here again because it's very thin so I'm just going to allow the heat from that metal cookie cutter to just melt through. If you don't cut a hole you can't rest your Pokeball over the dessert. On top of each of our little ice cream desserts, we're going to have a cookie with one of those edible images. So instead of baking cookies and using fondant to affix, I'm using simple vanilla sandwich cookies. Twist one half off, you can eat that if you like. And then you want to cut around those edible images and you can stick them straight down onto the sandwich cream in the middle of each cookie. In Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, some of the Pokemon have taken on different forms than in other regions. As you begin your adventure, you'll get to choose one of three partners. Rowlet, the grass type and flying type Pokemon, Litten, the fire type Pokemon, and Poplio, the water type Pokemon. These are some of Oliver's new favourites, and I'm also going with Mimikyu and Alolan Vulpix. Cookies are done and it's ganache time. The idea with this dessert is you want everything ready before serving. So you make your ganache, put it all together, pour, and you're done. Over my white chocolate goes my cream, and again, I'll leave that recipe in the description box below. I'm going to put that into the microwave on 30 second intervals, stirring in between until it's completely smooth, flowing white chocolate sauce. Sauce is done, really not much to it. I'm going to pour mine into a little jug just so it's a bit easier for me to target where I want to pour it. This, you want that to be hot when you serve it, so it may need another little microwave just before you're ready to pour it over your desserts. Assembly time, always the best. I've got all of my elements ready to go. I'm putting down the coconut first, because next goes on my ice cream and the coconut's gonna keep my ice cream from touching the actual bowl and my poke bowl. So I'm going to take a knife and you just wanna make a little incision into your ice cream. It will be cold, because you need a little slit so we don't break our little sandwich cookie. In goes Poplio, my first partner Pokemon from Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon into its little crevice. And then over goes our poke bowl. It's so adorable. 
So the toasted coconut on the base not only protects the ice cream from melting, it gives you longer to serve the dessert, but it's also gonna protect the bottom of your poke bowl from the heat of your chocolate sauce. So when you drizzle on top, it should dissolve nicely the top, but not actually hit the base until a little bit later. These are looking adorable. So cute. We caught so many Pokemon and I love them all. I am obsessed with how these turned out. I don't know about you guys, but I think we know what's going on on the inside, but I still don't really know which Pokemon is inside which Pokeball. This is such a cool dessert idea. I cannot wait for the kids to see what I came up with for their little Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon themed desserts. Whoa, Mom, you outdid yourself. Thank you. You said you wanted a Pokemon dessert? I'm you got a Pokemon dessert. On it now. You already know what's going on. That's there's going to be a Pokemon inside. Do you guys know how this works? Yeah. I got hot white chocolate sauce. We're going to pour it over the top and inside is a cookie with one surprise Pokemon. Oh. <gasps> it's Litten, the fire. Do we like Litten? Uh, yes. The Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon games are available November 18th for Nintendo 3DS, and you can purchase them in stores or as digital downloads from Nintendo eShop. We caught so many Pokemon. I'm probably not gonna eat them all, but I certainly had to reveal them all. How cute are the Pokemon dissolving desserts? A big thanks to Nintendo for teaming up with me on today's video. I made another Alola-inspired Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon creation over on Nintendo's YouTube channel. If you wanna check out this awesome pull-apart cupcake cake, that actually looks like the Alola region, complete with little smoking volcanoes, make sure you check out Nintendo's YouTube channel. I will leave links down below. Have a great day, and as always guys, thanks very much for watching.